For by grace you have been saved through faith. It is the gift of God, not as a result of works, lest anyone should boast. One of the most famous passages of all of the Bible, certainly one of the most famous passages of the book of Ephesians. It is our privilege to take a look at that today. Read with me. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8, 9, and 10. 8, 9, and 10. Usually, when this verse is quoted, this passage is quoted, it's only 8 and 9. But we're going to 8, 9, and 10 today because they really do belong together. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8, 9, and 10. All right. For by grace you have been saved through faith. This is not your own doing. It is the gift of God. Not as a result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Let's unpack this just a little bit. The first part, it says that, For by grace you have been saved through faith. And not as a result of works. This is not your own doing. It is a gift of God. So all those things being brought together lays the responsibility, the credit, squarely on God's shoulders, as it should be. No one can boast about the the transformed life they live. No one can boast about the level of spirituality they enjoy. All of this and specifically the faith, the fundamental faith itself is the gift of God. That's how it is grammatically. So from the very start, it is a gift of God. Not only that, and this is where I want to draw your attention. I want to draw your attention to this. It is really good to remember that our salvation is not by our works. We don't attain salvation. It's not a result of works. It is not by our working hard, by our transformed lives, we are saved. That is it's not a result. Our salvation is not a result of works. Faith is not a result of works. None of this is a result of works. Even good works is not a result of works. Okay? But... Salvation results in works. That's what is being said here, verse 10. For we are his workmanship, his workmanship. If God is the workman and we are the workmanship, who is the one doing the work? God is. We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works. For good, you were made the purpose You were made for the purpose of a transformed Christ-like life. This is what you were made for. This is what you were born again for. Yes, believing in Christ Jesus, loving God, should and does result in a life that is more truthful, more generous, more kind, more selfless, more self-disciplined. All of these Christ-like characteristics appear in the person's life, what the Bible calls the fruit of the Holy Spirit. We looked at that, remember? Yep. It results in this. I don't know how many times or how many different ways I need to say it to you, but please take it to heart. This is a fundamental understanding of what we have in Jesus, which is completely contrary to religiosity. Religiosity or legalism or whatever you want to label it, wrong religion teaches you, especially Christian form, the Christian form of wrong religion says, faith plus works equals salvation. Remember, we talked about this. But true Christianity says, faith equals salvation that produces works. Right? It is the gift of God. What is faith? And that results in a salvation that results in works. That is what is being taught here, isn't it? Clear, right? You got it? Now get this, here's another beautiful gem. Created, we were, we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God 
prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. God prepared a transformed life. God prepared works of generosity. God prepared works of selflessness. God prepared works of stepping out of our comfort zone on behalf of the people we are called to love. God prepared good works of going to the ends of the earth, spreading the gospel of Jesus by life and word. God prepared them beforehand that we should walk in them. It is like when you you know that a birthday is coming up, a birthday you shouldn't miss, like your husband's birthday. All right, turn it around. I like to shift things a little bit from the nor- from the normal way things are spoken of. Yes, your wife's birthday, which we men, yes, in general, are prone to forget, which we ought not forget. Speak for yourself, Pastor Paul. Okay, okay, all right, all right. No, actually, <laughs> I haven't forgotten my wife's birthday. Yeah, but yeah, you prepare ahead of time. It should a gift for a special occasion like that should not be something that's an afterthought. It should be prepared beforehand, like maybe worked on or something you make yourself. You put some loving sweat and tears into it, and then you give it. In this scenario, it is God who has prepared beforehand the gift of a transformed life for us to live. Oh, Jesus' words are so, so applicable right here. Take my yoke upon you, for my yoke is easy, my burden is light. It is Jesus' yoke, Jesus' burden, Jesus' responsibility, Jesus' good work, Jesus' transformed life that he gives to us. So walk in that. Having received the life of Jesus, having had Jesus credited to our account, how can we not change? And if we don't change, can it be said that that fundamental transformation or that receiving of the grace of God, that faith, that salvation was truly authentic? True, authentic, authentic faith resulting in salvation must result in a transformed life. Yes, little bit by little bit at times, and sometimes by leaps and bounds, but definitely transformed husbands, transformed wives, transformed children, transformed students, transformed employees, transformed pastors. Daily transformation. Our spirits are being renewed day by day, and may you day by day walk and walk more and more in the life of good works that our God has prepared beforehand. Loved one, whenever you get tired or you want to give up on these good works, remember these words. This is what you were made for. You are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works. You were born for this. And it is God who has prepared you for it. So, don't give up on yourself. Don't give up, most importantly, on God, whose work it is from start to finish anyway. This life of grace is the Christian life, and nothing less than this. Everything else is vain religiosity. May you always walk in relationship and never in religiosity. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we have a lifetime together and on our own to learn what that means, to walk in relationship with you. May we see all of our lives from that point of view, that we are your workmanship created in Jesus to walk like Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Surrounded by such true and gentle powers So lovingly consoled and without fear The 
will I spend with you these final hours and then together enter a new year by gentle powers lovingly surrounded with patience we'll endure let come what may God is with us at night and in the and certainly on every future day. The worries of the old year still torment us. We're troubled still by long and wicked days. O oh Lord, give our frightened souls the healing for which you've chased us in so many by gentle powers lovingly surrounded with patience we'll endure let come what may God is with us at night and in the morning and certainly on every future day and though you offer us the cup so heavy, so painful it's the most that we can stand. Not faltering with thanks we will accept it, and take it as a gift from your good hand. By gentle powers lovingly surrounded, with patience we God is with us at night and in the morning, and certainly on every future day. And should it be your will once more to grant us to see the world and to enjoy the sun, gentle powers lovingly surrounded with patience we endure let come what may God is with us at night and in the morning and certainly on every